Oh, an exciting time here on campus as today, along with my co-host Ryan Walsh, we'll visit with 10 Minutemen coaches and introduce to you 20 new players who have signed their national letters of intent to play football at UMass. My name is Jay Burnham and I'll take you through this one. I've got head coach Walt Bell right out of the gates and coach, just let me start by saying happy National Signing Day to you. Yeah, absolutely. It's a uh, you know, big day for us. Um, you know, I added a lot of critical pieces, you know, to our football team, you know, but more importantly than that, just a, a foundational class, yeah. you know, a group of kids that when we look up three and four years from now, you know, that's going to be the leadership of our football team. And so for me, we signed a bunch of smart, tough, resilient, overachievers, you know, people that, that, that fit us, you know, and who we want to ultimately be someday. And so uh, really proud of this group, proud of the staff for all the work they've done and uh, excited to get these guys here and get moving. You signed seven guys in the early period. You had 13 today. How did the first wave of guys dictate what we're doing here today with the, tw the additional 13? Yeah, you know, I think the first thing was when, when I got hired and you start looking at scholarship numbers, you know, that there were some immediate needs just to survive spring practice. Um, you know, in, in midterm, you know, especially whether it was on the offensive line, corner, you know, somebody that could possibly help somebody maybe bump to a safety position. But we had to add some pieces in that early, um, at the early signing period. Did it necessarily dictate what we did in the second period? I mean, obviously a number is a number, and, and you can't go over that or your allotment or whatever it may be. But, you know, we, we had a couple really – areas that were plans of attack, places that we knew from a system standpoint where we really had to add some volume, um, you know, and, and get that done really starting from scratch. And so, again, just our staff has done an incredible job. And, uh, you know, I'm just, for me, the most important thing we do is we get these kids here, we got to get those guys rolling. You know, obviously you saw the D-line group you know, there are, uh, there's a large amount Some big of big dudes, yeah. There. <laughs> large uh, interior group of D linemen. We got to get those guys rolling, and we got to get them here ready to play. We'll talk about all those players. We'll get to visit with the individual coaches as well. We've got nine on your staff. Can you give us a little insight about you know, some of these coaches and who we're going to meet today? Uh, yeah, you know, f for me, you know, having been on four new staffs over the last eight years. Um, it, it was really critical to me that I bring in, and when I say like-minded, I don't mean think like me or anything else, but just in, in terms of what their vision of this profession is, you know, and that's people that are about the kids, you know, people that are going to tell the truth, people that are going to invest in their kids, whether or not they can help them, you know, no matter how good they are. I mean, just people that love kids, yeah. you know, and people that are in this for the right reason. And on top of that, and just have intimate working knowledge with everybody on this staff at different stops along the way in my career. You know, it's just really comforting to know that not only do you have people that will tell you the truth, you know, and guys that genuinely, genuinely, genuinely are invested in young people's future, but, you know, guys that you know that they're skilled, you know, and, and that they're going to do a great job and they're going to create a great product on the football field. It's been about two months since your introductory press conference. What's been the biggest challenge for you so far? I mean, nothing really. I mean, nothing. No you, know, I, you know, and I don't mean that arrogantly. I mean, you know, Ryan has done an incredible job. Yeah. You know, I mean, if I ask, they say yes, have been told no once. I mean, I, everybody that I've come in contact with in the administration, I mean, just over the top, you know, helpful. And, uh, you know, for, for us moving forward, you know, I just think it's so critical that if we can just stay in, you know, direct alignment with each other and make sure that on my end, you know, especially in the recruiting piece, that I'm bringing kids in here that are they're a great fit for us as a university, you know, academically and socially. You know, I mean, that's just – that's the biggest thing. Yeah. And if we can continue to stay in a great line like that, you know, good things will happen. I think you said that, too, to the community when you first got introduced, saying, look, this group that we're bringing in today or bringing in at this point is the foundation for – when you're really going to take off as a program. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I always said. You know, I think in the interview with Ryan, that was one of the things that we discussed was, you know, especially in this first class, you've got to make sure that when you look up three and four years from now, that's going to be the leadership of your football team. Yeah. You know, and, when, and those are the guys that have got to come in and really not only help establish a culture, but two and three years from now uphold that culture and make sure that it is what you want it. When you're recruiting guys like that, I mean, how do you – figure out if they're that right fit. I mean, grades, you said, was, yeah. was part of it. Um, 
upbringing? I mean, what are some of the characteristics that you're looking for? Yeah, I, I think it's twofold because every situation is different. Mm -hmm. You know, every home situation is different. You know, things they've been exposed to in their lives. Those are all, you know, you, you got to add that all up. You know, and for me, there's a couple things. You know, obviously you've got their training script, you know, and you've got tardies and absences and grades and, and, you know, the analytical side of things. And then you've got a chance to be with their families, you know, and because you understand that they've had 18 years with them, yeah. you know, and so how, how they were raised and, and the type of family and environment that they grew up in, that's going to impact their decision making in the future. And then also you've got everybody in that building from rival high school coaches to their own high school coaches to, you know, custodian, I mean, anybody in that building, you know, that you can seek information from. And to me, that's the biggest thing is when you go out, do as much fact-finding as you can, you know, because to me, we're, we're looking for kids, you know, that are high achievers, yeah. you know, kids that being successful in all walks of life, that it's important to, you know. And, and to me, I think we've done that to a really high level in this class. When you're pitching a recruit, what are some of the things that you're saying? I know I've heard a lot about the, the dining here on campus. I mean, how much does that does that play into it? What are some of the aspects that uh, you can get to lure somebody here to, to school? Yeah, for for me, the dining is a big piece. Obviously, okay. every right. Saturday morning when we go over there with academics, we spend time there. Uh, it, it has been a hit, but for me, you're coming to a place that's an unbelievable land grant public institution. You know, you're talking one of the top 26 public research universities in the country. Um, also, you're, you're in a winning culture. So you've got the academic piece. You know, th this area of the country, you know, the, the winning is important. Yeah. You know, and so you've got a great winning culture. You know, and then also we're in a great location, you know, and we have, we're in great access to, a, you know, a lot of other great places. And so for me, it's kind of the whole thing, Ac academically, socially, athletically, we can answer a lot of those questions. You finally get to this day, right? You put all this work in. Obviously, there's still um, guys to sign, and you're trying to kind of scramble to, to do some other things. What's the emotion? Is it relief? Is it excitement? Is it an eagerness to, to attack the football field and get towards April 20th? Or, I mean, what are some of the emotions that you're going through today? Uh, you know, anticlimactic isn't the right word. Okay. It's just I'm ready to get to the next evolution. You know, I'm ready to go get – my hands and our hands on our kids, you know, and, and recruit our own players, you know, and start pouring ourselves into their lives, you know. And so for me, it's uh, not that, not for one second do I take for granted the decision that these kids made for us, you know, and, and I completely understand that they're, they're now mine forever. But I'm just ready to go to the next evolution. I'm, I'm ready to start coaching our guys. All right. You look like it. Stick around. We're going to bring you back on to talk about some of the quarterbacks. But first, we're going to take a look back at what last year was like for the Minutemen on the gridiron. Lunges, 
across the goal line. Touchdown, UMass. Gomez in the shotgun at the 45 of Georgia. First and 10, he'll take the snap, load the arm, a deep high spiral. Isabella right side, runs under it, makes the catch at the three, drags a man in. Leaves his feet, jumps up, over and in. Pass to the near side, caught by Isabella, runs through a tackle, cuts to the middle. Isabella is in. Touchdown, UMass. on his own read, fakes the give to Young, keeps it himself, spins to his right, gets to the goal line, touchdown! Thomas fakes to Young, keeps it himself, runs off the left edge, lunges, touchdown, Minuteman. His own read, handoff to Young, running right, has the five, dives, helicopters, in! Touchdown, Marquise Young! Second and ten, shotgun snap, Barnett facing pressure again, hit as he throws it, lobbed up, down the middle and intercepted by Brayton Barr! He goes with a fake to Young and a bootleg left, throws it to the end zone, man wide open, right in the middle, waiting for it, and caught, touchdown, Samuel Amelis. Looking deep, lots of deep, right side, Isabella's got it at the five, sheds a tackler into the end zone, touchdown. Good spot to kick, drill straight through the uprights, it is good. Marquise Young from UMass has big room, and he's going to carry it across the 45, put his head down. Andy Isabella on the screen to the left, Isabella inside the 10, stays on his feet, and into the end zone, Andy Isabella out of UMass. We end on an Isabella highlight, huh? What a season it was for UMass football on the gridiron. We hope bigger things to come next year. Thanks to Watt Bell for joining us in that first segment. I should mention, I know a lot of you were expecting to see Andy Gresh in this chair, and unfortunately this morning he had a family emergency, so our thoughts and prayers are with his family, and hopefully everything is okay for him. But it's me alongside Ryan Walsh, who we'll meet a little bit later on, uh, filling in here on the UMass National Signing Day show. We'll be back with Athletic Director Ryan Bamford here on Nesson Plus.
The best of Las Vegas is coming to the heart of New England. This is a first. Join the UMass Football Gridiron Club today. Its mission is to strengthen the university's football program by encouraging private and volunteer leadership from Minutemen across the country. Members provide financial support to help the Minutemen compete at the FBS level, provide leadership development programming for student athletes, and sponsor functions for club members. Back here on the UMass National Signing Day show. We've got a lot to get into. As I mentioned, we talked with all the coaches that we have here on staff. But before we get to that, we've got Athletic Director Ryan Bamford. Ryan, thanks for being here. Thank you. National Signing Day. Huh? Mass men today. A lot of mass men. Yeah, a lot. We've got 20 mass men, seven in the early signees. How can a day like today transform a program? Well, I think, especially when you've made a coaching change, I think Walt really had it in the right perspective when we interviewed him about making sure that this class, we took the right young men into our program because year three and four, that's your culture. Yeah. You're, you're setting a culture with those individuals. And so I think he's really, he and his staff have been really selective. And this is going to set us up ultimately for success uh, for, the, for the future. And, you know, you want to bring the right people in that have, uh, that fit with you culturally, but want to be here and ultimately get a great degree and do do wonderful things with their life and I think with the 20 or so men that we've got in in this class I think we've achieved that he talked a little bit about the commitment from the organ the administration like yourself the university as a whole and there's a larger emphasis too on just upgrading things here like at McGurk Stadium there's going to be some new stuff this year yeah we're very fortunate our lead gift from uh, from an alum Marty Jacobson uh, we, we announced that last summer and uh, Marty's gift, what it, do, what it does for us, it's transformational in a lot of ways. It allows us to uh, build an indoor facility for not only our football program and our, our, our other sports, but also for the student body to be able to use. That will go up next November, being used through the end of March. Uh, we also have a, a full complement of bathrooms that will be on the east and the west side of the stadium, which I think is a major upgrade for this stadium. We're going to uh, blow out the south end zone, create a brand new video board uh, through a, a gift from the Manganero family, yeah. uh, which has been just that that'll be a, a remarkable uh, uh, just addition to the to the portfolio out at McGurk, as well as building an end zone club down there in the south end zones to the point where we're, we will have four price points for our season ticket holders or anybody that wants to come and, and be a part of this um, to be able to to uh, to jump in and. Um, and see Walt Bell and build this program up. Uh, I, it's an exciting time, and you know the, the timing of everything kind of fit perfectly. Yeah. We've got a lot of those season ticket holders here today. I thought the new bathrooms would get a round of applause somewhat. <laughs> I guess I guess not. Okay, there it is, a video board. I mean, those are all fan amenities. I mean, those are things that enhance the experience when you come to a game. Yeah, I think this $18 million project, and you're see the people that are watching on TV here are seeing some of the renderings of it, but I, I think from a fan perspective, and we have a lot of loyal people here in the room today, and a number that are at home watching uh, and, and, and all over the country, this is something we needed to do to upgrade yeah. the experience, to, to make sure that as an FBS program, we're continuing to evolve. And then the indoor facility, what that's going to do for our program and for this athletic department, this university is going to be outstanding and long overdue. And we're excited to do it and very appreciative of Marty for stepping up and others to, to make this a, a, a reality. You just told me something off air. I'd, I'd hope you'd be able to share this. Andy Isabelli had talked about his work ethic during the commercial break. And without the indoor facility, he's out there rain, sleep. Or snow. Yeah, right? two years ago, I think I've told this story to, to a number of people in this room have heard it. They've probably heard it when Coach Whipple told it as well. And that's when Mark and I kind of got together and talked about this indoor facility. And I mentioned it to Marty Jacobson. And he was out there two Februarys ago um, shoveling off after a snowstorm 60-yard patch so he could do sprints. And I, I mean, I'm telling you when, when I – and I've, I've got a number of friends that are scouts in the NFL that have called about him, and I've referenced that story. And that – I mean, obviously, that's a huge piece to yeah. – what his work ethic and what that's done for him, um, you know, from an unheralded recruit to now being somebody that's probably going to go in the first couple of days of the yep. NFL draft, it's remarkable. It's a testament to him, and, and it, it shows where our program's gone and where it's going to go. And every time you tell that story, can you add an inch of snow? So yeah, it's two every, inches yeah. first, and it's that's three right. inches, now it's yeah, four it's inches. It's about two and a half yeah. feet now. <laughs> it took him four hours to, to – <laughs> 
to shovel it. Let's talk about the schedule coming up in 2019. We've got a lot of future opponents too that drew a lot of uh, headlines as well. But let's start with this upcoming season. What do you like about this schedule for UMass? It's got good balance. You know, I think for the first year that we were an independent in 2016, 17. You know, really, beggars couldn't be choosers. We had to kind of take some games. It was a tough two-year two, two year schedule. I think 18 kind of regulated itself. I thought last fall we had a chance to, uh, to get some wins. And I think 19 is, is similar. You know, I think there's a lot of games out there that we can go out and grab. I, I like our home schedule. Obviously, we've got uh, BYU. We end up the year at McGurk with BYU. Yeah. We've got Connecticut on there, which obviously our fans like and our kids like. It's a good rounded schedule. We kind of end the year and uh, begin the year and end the year with two Power Five Big Ten institutions. Start on a Friday night at Rutgers to uh, to start Coach Bell era here. Yeah, it feels like a good mix there. You've got the Power Fives and you've got you know a Sun Belt team, a Conference USA team. So there's a, a little parity. There is, and and you know I think it's manageable. There's good balance. We we got the buy at the right time in October, and then you know moving into to some of the future years, I think we set ourselves up for some success over over a period of time. All right, go, don't go too far. We've got you coming back later on in the show. We also like to introduce Ryan Walsh, who will be my co-host today, and he's got uh, over there with us, um, Coach John Bills. And uh, Ryan, thanks for being here today. We'll uh, we'll get to you guys uh, when we come back here on the UMass National Signing Day show on SM Plus. All right, we're going to stick with us right now. Thanks, Jay, and thanks, Athletic Director Ryan Bamford, for having me here today. Now, Coach John Bills, the tight end coach, but more importantly for today's reasoning, the recruiting coordinator, you came up with Coach Bell from Florida State. You had a limited time to focus and zero in on some of these young men. What was your philosophy? Uh, the biggest thing that I, I know, you know, uh, Ryan's mentioned it, Coach Bell has mentioned it, it culture was the biggest thing. So we, we wanted to bring in guys that would really add to that culture and kind of create that vision that Coach Bell had set out for us. Um, and then the goal is just to, from an athletic and ac academic standpoint, just to continue to bring in players that fit that mold and continue to raise that bar of that standard. When you're trying to talk to millennials, and you may yeah. be one, so maybe you can connect better than I can, when you're in their living room selling you masks, what got their eyes to light up? Well, uh, the, the school really sells itself. And I, did, I wasn't uh, aware of everything that we had going for us from that standpoint when I first took the job. Really, the, the vision that, that I bought into was, like you said, having the opportunity to work with Coach Bell this past year. And uh, just our philosophies, our vision, our work ethic kind of aligned together. So when he gave me that, that call to come up here, I, I was all systems go. And then when you really go and do your research on the school itself, you find out it's got all these things going for it from an academic standpoint, from an athletic standpoint, from a facility standpoint. And the staff that Coach Bell was able to put together um, were all kind of that like-minded individual that really buy into what he's trying to bring to the table here. And you get enough of those people involved and around those recruits as possible, and it gives us a winning edge. Coach Bills, we're going to hear a lot more from you later talking about some individual players. And the UMass Football Signing Day Show will be back after this. Thank you. Thanks for sticking with us on the UMass Football National Signing Day show. Right now, I'm with special teams coordinator 
Luke Paschal. Coach, you have an interesting background with Coach Bell. You grew up together, you've kind of rose through the ranks together. Start me back how you guys met. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a long story, but, you know, long story short, you know, whenever I was growing up, his family kind of uh, took me in, put me on the right track. Uh, I, I'm not saying I was the best little kid in the world. Uh, Coach Bell and I, you know, we, we, um, we played sports together, all that kind of stuff. And like I said, his family took me in, kind of got me on the right track, helped me get to college. And from that point forward, we've always been best friends. So having his family take me in, sorry, I, I'm sorry I'm keeping my phones on me here. We're expecting one more call, so I've got, <laughs> I've got to keep it on me. Uh, his family taking me in is, a, you know, I consider him a brother. So we, we consider each other family. Why was it so important to you? You spent the last few years separated. Yep. Why was it so important to you to come back together and build something together? Well, it's always been at least, you know, it's been both of our dreams to be a head coach at one point in time. Uh, he, he made it there first, and we both said it at any point in time, if any one of us becomes a head coach, you don't have to make a call. Don't make a call, I'll be there the next day. And that's literally how it went. He got hired, on, I think, on December 3rd, 4th. And on December 5th, he was doing his press conference, and I was walking in with my suitcase. So that's how fast it happened. What do you think you guys can build together here at UMass? I, I, I honestly believe, having been around it for a month and a half now, I honestly believe, you know, with, with the way Ryan Bamford thinks and Coach Bell thinks and how we've always grown up through the ranks and, and how we wanted to do it, I honestly believe with the facilities and the academics and the area that we're in, we're so close to major – major areas in terms of New Jersey DMV that you can win here and you can win in a big way and it's been done here before it's been done here before at the FCS level and it's it's going to be very uh, it's going to be very surprising when we start doing it at the FBS level all right special teams coordinator Luke Pascal. let's hope you get that phone call and some good news right there thanks for having us Absolutely. thanks for being with us today and we're going to toss it back over to Jay all right thanks a lot we've got defensive coordinator Azaro Durahim, also cornerbacks coach. Welcome to UMass, Azaro. Thank you. Pleasure to be here, man. I'm excited, definitely excited to be a part of UMass football. You're the defensive guy. I am. I am the defensive coordinator, the, uh, the mass man defensive coordinator. Tell me a little bit about you know your defensive philosophy and the defensive staff you guys have built. Well, I think it definitely starts with our defensive staff. Uh, our co-defensive coordinator, uh, Tommy Restivo, is a very accomplished. Uh, he's been a defensive coordinator for two different, you know, universities. He's going to bring a wealth of knowledge to our to our defense. Secondly, our uh, defensive line coach, Sid Douglas, is an awesome, awesome defensive line coach. Uh, he, he comes with a background from Arkansas State. They, if you know anything about Arkansas State, you you know about their fronts, you know, from tackle tackles for loss as well as sacks so he's a great addition and then lastly our safety coach is uh, Jason Tudrin who's a former high school coach like myself uh, so he's a very versatile coach he's been around uh, uh, North, Car uh, North Carolina for about four or five years and is really adept man in, in the defensive backfield he's actually a, an alumni for UMass as well yeah we'll, we'll get to him too a little yep, bit yep, later on yep, you, yep. you've got three years at Maryland why UMass what what of Lord you here outside of Coach Walt Bell? Uh, I think first and foremost, I wanted to be a part of something special with special people. Uh, and, and you're going to probably hear that theme from a lot of coaches. But, you know, this business can be a hard business. And it's about surrounding yourself with, with great people, not just great coaches. Uh, and, and probably the greatest guy that I, was, that I had a pleasure to be around for the last two years at, at University of Maryland was Walt Bell, uh, a brilliant offensive uh, coordinator. But beyond beyond all of that, you know, he's a great person, and I seen it firsthand. You know, the way he dealt with his kids, uh, the way he cares about us, you know, as staff, and the way he cares about the student athletes. So that's an important part of of this whole situation. We look forward to talking about some of the defensive guys that you have uh, signed here today. We'll get into the actual players that are coming to campus when we return here on the National Signing Day Show on Nesson Plus.
This is the place where planets collide. Where Pulitzer and Fulbright are full-time residents. Where 28,000 brilliant young minds from 65 countries call home. This is the place that propels the state and lifts the world. UMass Amherst, this is the place. All right, welcome back to UMass National Signing Day show here inside the Mullen Center. We're going to talk a little bit about the offense and some of the specific players that we have. We just heard from uh, wide receivers coach Luke Pascal, assistant head coach, special teams coordinator. you got a lot of titles, by the way. Let's talk about some of these guys that we have coming into campus. Wide receivers seem to be a, a focal point for this, for this class. Well, it was something we needed. When we first took the job, um, you know, there were six guys that were currently on scholarship whenever we got hired. So when you – when you show up like that, and I'm allotted to get at least 11 to 12 wide receiver scholarship spots. So when you, whenever you take over and there's only six on scholarship there and eight total in the room, yet you're, you're not only hurting from a, a skill set, but not only it's a depth issue as well, like injuries and all that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So we had to go out and we had to go find some guys immediately. Well, let's learn about some of those guys. Cam Roberson, he's from Bakersfield College, spent two years there. Tell us a little bit about him. Uh, Cam Roberson's, a, uh, like you said, a kid out of Bakersfield, California. We, we ended up jumping on him his first year. He was, a, he was a safety. He was a safety, and we really got turned on to him by uh, our, our D-line coach that we hired. They were going to take him at Arkansas State. And uh, so they didn't really want to go on him. So we, we ended up watching his film, seeing the fact that he was a great return guy. And being a special teams guy, I'm all for it. <laughs> and so you watch his film as a return guy, and you say, this guy's pretty special. And you come to find out once you meet his, once you meet his mom and dad and the kid, and he's here currently right now working out. He's actually with the team right now working out. And uh, he, he's a dynamic football player, tough. Uh, everybody's going to say he's undersized, but he has got a strong build to him. And he's got real speed. We've known some undersized receivers here at UMass, right? We just I, I saw about, okay. one. Y'all had, didn't he? Yeah. Didn't he? Belitnikoff, something, something or other? Something, yeah. Something. How about Javon Turner, wide receiver from New Jersey? I, I mentioned You mentioned the Bakersfield College transfer. You got Turner coming in from New Jersey. A couple New Jersey kids on this class. Yeah. Uh, Javon Turner's an interesting one. Uh, Coach Duda there at, at Lackawanna does an unbelievable job. He's been there for 26 years, and he, he'll, he'll shoot you straight. And he gave the kid the stamp of approval. And coming from him, that's huge. Uh, but. He has a, I mean, Turner has an interesting story. His story, we were, we were in Jersey to see another kid, and, and his, his, it all happened really fast. So we're there on, on Wednesday to see another kid in Jersey, and we get this call like, hey, you need to watch this kid. Two years ago in Jersey, this kid ran a 10 600 meter in high school. He was a 6 6 high jumper. He was an unbelievable player, got recruited by a lot of schools. At, at Paramus Catholic and didn't get the offers that he really wanted. Went to, didn't have the grades either. Went to Lackawanna and is an unbelievable kid. Grades are high. He is, he's going to be a special talent. Last but not least on the receiver trio here, you've got Darian Wiley. Speaking of athletes, this is a guy coming out of Georgia, uh, I think highly heralded, is a guy that brings a lot to the table. Yeah, Wiley was a, was a guy, we were actually, we got a lot of funny stories on some of these kids we recruited, but we were recruiting a linebacker at the same school and, and, the coach, we called, the, we called the coach and said, you know, we were talking about this other kid, and then he said, hey, we got this receiver that he, he's, he's got a bunch of offers, but he's interested in playing with the linebacker. We couldn't take the linebacker, but we built a relationship with the receiver and the mom and the two brothers, and Coach White there did a great job helping us as well. Uh, we probably would have, if he hadn't have broke his right hand his senior year and still played the whole senior year, we probably may have lost him to basketball. That's how good of a basketball player he is, and you can see it on film. I mean, he's going up and making plays. He can actually run away from people. He's 6'3". Uh, we actually had to beat some major G5 programs out two nights ago because they tried to come in on him late. He and stiff he said, armed him. And he said no. He said no, and that's a testament to him and his family. All right. We're excited. Thanks a lot. I'm excited. All right. Now back to Ryan. We'll go to the defensive side of the ball with D-line coach Cedric Douglas. Yeah, Coach Douglas, another – 
coming from Arkansas State, you didn't cross paths directly with Coach Bell. And for those of you at home who may not know much about Arkansas State, I know very little, but all I know is they're in a bowl game year after year after year, and we hope to see that soon at UMass. Yes, sir. Coach Douglas, why UMass for you? Uh, well, it kind of goes back to what you start out by saying. Uh, Coach Bell had been, like you said, at the front of that string of just success that they had there. And I, I basically followed his career because we had, we had be, been in the same halls. And uh, uh, my time there with him, or since I've been here, has been great. And he's been everything that I thought he would be. And so for me, getting in with a young staff uh, that had a great vision, and when I got to see what we had at our disposal here, like, there's no way that we can't do some of the same things that we were having there at Arkansas State. Let's talk about some of the defensive linemen that you signed, the guys you will be working very closely with. First, local talent, keeping some of the best in the Commonwealth at home in the flagship university, Wilson Frederick. What, what can you tell us about him? Well, th it was an awesome uh, time getting to know him. It was a very fast uh, situation because of the fact that I did get hired on a little bit late. And so one of the, the issue areas for us was depth in the D-line room. And for me, again, I, I have to say, but coming from Arkansas State in the tradition of having great defensive lines, the best part about it is you had guys that were very versatile, extremely violent, and played very hard. He is one of the twitchiest D linemen I've seen in the state as far as uh, at his size. He's 6'2", going to easily be about 290 when it's all said and done, 295. And, and his strength and speed are just something special. Everett High School. Yes, sir. Cletus Mathurin. Another New England product. Yes, sir. What can you tell about tell us about him? Um, and the good thing about him is he was he was already kind of on board uh, with UMass when I got here, so I kind of just got to see what he was going to be. Um, great size, a technician with his hands. He knows how to use his body, and when you see how big he actually is, but see him get to the football, he's exactly what we want here. Being a mass man that just knows how to play hard play smart, get to the football, and do good things when you get there. And you reach down in the Mid-Atlantic region, the DMV, Billy Wooden. I expect a lot of that at his coaching staff with yeah, some in Maryland. Uh, the DMV is probably going to be a, a, a little bit of a, a hold for us there because there's a lot of talent just like Billy. We got, uh, again, on to him late, but my, the theme here is great hands, violent, plays very hard because we're a front, we're going to do multiple things, and being able to have that versatility is huge for us. Coach Douglas, thank you very much. We're looking forward to an exciting brand of defensive ball. No base front, what, what is it? No, you're going to run a base 3-4, but you're going to be switching yeah, we're gonna up Yeah, we're going to be lot. multiple, base uh, three down, but I mean, you'll see us in some different pictures at times. We're looking forward to it. And the UMass Football Signing Day show continues after this. UMass come back the other way. Here comes Hampton Bay getting the foul. And the layup is good. Hampton Bay comes up with it. Wide open from the corner. It's the corner for the win. It's good. This is the place where planets collide where Pulitzer and Fulbright are full-time residents, where 28,000 brilliant young minds from 65 countries call home. This is the place that propels the state and lifts the world. UMass Amherst, this is the place. National Signing Day show here on campus. We bring back Walt Bell, 
And uh, it's time to talk quarterbacks. So that's what we're going to do in this segment. You've got two in this signing class. Before we get to them, can you just tell us a little bit about bringing in a pair of quarterbacks and what the, the need is for, the, for that position on the roster? Yeah, j just the way the roster was built more than anything else. You know, we, we've got two seniors in this class, so we're going to have two departures. Um, and all, we also felt like we just needed to add some depth and competition to the room. You know, yeah. competition brings the best out of everybody. So um, especially knowing that we're making a transition, transition in system. Um, and, and for us, that's going to be critical is that we've got somebody that can do the things that we want to ask those kids to do, especially come from the system that was previous to us. And so we just wanted to make sure that we were adding competition and kids that really fit us well. I know you want to be guarded and close to the vest with the information you give out to the opposition, specifically Rutgers in the, on opening day. But can you tell us a little bit what that system might look like or kind of? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a secret there. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we're, you know, um, spread one bag, no huddle. You know, obviously, I think the three things that will kind of stand out to fans, um, just the amount of space, you know, the, the amount of pace, you know, and just making sure that we can put our playmakers in a five by five yard box with one guy, yeah. you know, and it's our job to recruit the guys that make those guys miss. And so, uh, but just, just the space and the pace of it, you know, are kind of two of the things that differentiate us from everybody else in the world that has already long ago made the transition to being in a spread one back. So. Well, let's dive into the two quarterbacks you have signed. Andrew Brito, the first kid from New Jersey. Absolutely. You know, he was a great player at Paramus um, and then went to College of the Canyons and really, again, ma made the decision to go out there because, you know, he didn't get a lot of the options that he wanted. Um, you know, and he is a kid, the ball, he's a, on the smaller side, you know, admittedly. Um, but the ball explodes out of his hand, yeah. you know, and when you see him, his, not only his high school football tape, but his college tape, you see him make plays with his arm, you see him make plays with his feet, and just a big-handed kid, even though he's a little bit smaller in stature, but more importantly than any of that, is every coach that's coached him at the high school level, the junior college level, anybody that's coached against him, is just a fierce competitor. You know, a guy that's not you know, he doesn't back down to anybody, even his own teammates in practice. I mean, a real leader and somebody we're proud to have. The ball coming out of his hand, I mean, for a, like a yeah. considerably a smaller guy, I mean, it, yes. it just zooms, huh? Absolutely. All right, well, right you got another guy coming in, too. Uh, Garrett Zuro, he's a quarterback from Ohio, St. Edward, a, a pretty uh, well-known uh, school. Yes, absolutely. You know, and, and I found out about, you know, when we were in North Carolina, we recruited Mitchell Trubisky. You know, Mitch is now the quarterback for Chicago Bears. That worked so, out. Yeah, it did. Um, but his high school coach at Mineral, Ohio, who they, Garrett beat him in the playoffs, um, just said, hey, there's a kid that blows my mind. He doesn't have a lot going. And, uh, you know, so I sit in the Coach Lombardo's office at St. Ed's. We watch all the tape. You know, he's a former wrestler. So, again, another tough guy. Um, but just as you watch his tape, he's got a great throwing base, a great platform in a state championship game. Um, he was 15 of 15, 3 of 3 in the red zone. I mean, really just, he's a great spot hitter. And then the thing you'll see on the tape is he also can win with his feet. You know, and he's not a, I mean, he's a thick kid. He's already 206 pounds. He'll finish as a 220 pound kid. You know, it really adds that element of physicality. There's a lot to be excited about. Just, I, I know you can kind of get caught up in, in watching the tape, right? I mean, the yeah. tape can tell you one thing or the other, but um, it seems like those two guys certainly uh, bring a lot to, to the program. Absolutely. You know, and, and for me, you know, especially at the quarterback position, you know, everybody talks about, you know, intangibles and all that stuff, but just to have somebody that you can count on to really be a living, breathing, walking, you know, envision of your program yeah. when you're not around, I mean, that's huge. So. Now you're going to get a lot of people asking who's going to play quarterback next year. We'll, 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 we'll yeah. take that down the road, hey, right? And you know what? The answer is really simple. We will find out in spring football. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> April 20th. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, Coach. Uh, good luck the rest of the way, okay? Absolutely. Thank you, brother. All right. We continue on here. Take a break. Come back with more on Nesson Plus. failure. 
really didn't know how to deal with it. Ernie's cardiac care team at Bay State Medical Center recommended an innovative solution. Ernie became the first person in the region with a left ventricular assist device, or LVAD pump, that's surgically attached to his heart to restore proper blood flow. Bay State saved my life. They have given me the opportunity to embrace life. To watch his story, go to baystatehealth.org slash Ernie. Bay State Health, advancing care, enhancing lives. Join the UMass Football Gridiron Club today. Its mission is to strengthen the university's football program by encouraging private and volunteer leadership from Minutemen across the country. Members provide financial support to help the Minutemen compete at the FBS level, provide leadership development programming for student athletes, and sponsor functions for club members. For more information on the UMass Gridiron Club, visit www.umassgridironclub.com today. The Learfield Directors Cup, the highly recognized mark of distinction in college athletics across all divisions, both men's and women's sports. Follow your favorite team's pursuit for excellence in this prestigious annual award through thedirectorscup.com, USA Today, or at L Directors Cup on Twitter or Facebook. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics since 1993. <laughs> Gun days over. <laughs> back here on National Signing Day show, we're going to go back to the defensive side of the football with defensive coordinator and cornerbacks coach Azar Abdul Rahim. And I know cornerbacks, I mean, that's your sweet spot, isn't it? That definitely is my sweet spot. You got a little bit of history with cornerbacks. Yeah, I, I played defensive back cornerback at uh, San Diego State, was a three year starter. A little on the small side, but I made it work. Still got the, <laughs> still got the build, right? <laughs> a little bit of build, man, but this is a kind of a tight shirt, so we'll. It's, it's, <laughs> I'll hold it again. Size down, yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk about the defensive backs here, but just give us an overview. You know, what are you looking for when you're out recruiting guys to play that position? I think more than anything, we're looking for competitive people, tough individuals, uh, uh, definitely speed. Uh, but I would say more than anything, we're looking for tough, competitive, hard-nosed guys that can show some versatility. And I think you know the two guys that we signed, you know, Josh Wallace. And, and, and Malik have a versatile individuals that can play multiple positions in the back end. Well, let's start with Malik Sanders. Let's get us a, a little bit of tape here. Well, Malik is a junior college guy, uh, so definitely he's, he's, he's going to allow us to be versatile in the secondary. He may be a corner for us, or possibly safety, or he can play nickel. Uh, he's going to uh, add immediate depth to the position. I think one of the, some of the things that stick out to him is just his toughness, his tenacity. Uh, he attacks the ball. Uh, he attacks defenders. He shows a level of physicality where we, you can envision him playing multiple positions in the secondary. Do you guys have a preference when you say, hey, we're going to bring you in, you're going to be a cornerback or a safety? I think you got You have to sell them on, on, on just one, being a team player and explain to them the skill set. You know, if they have aspirations on the next level of, of, of trying to get to the next level, versatility is probably important. That's, that's a roster spot in a sense. So selling them of them the, the importance of playing nickel, safety, yep. and, as well as cornerback. And it can only help them as their career Without advances. A Without a doubt. All right, let's take a look at the other defensive back we have on the – Josh uh, Wallace. Know, yep, Josh Wallace. Yeah, so Josh Wallace comes from the uh, from the DMV, the D, uh, D.C., Maryland, Virginia. That's your you spot. Know what that is. Definitely. I am homegrown. I am from the District of Columbia. Uh, so he comes from a story uh, football program, DeMatha, DeMatha High School. It's one of the best conferences in the country called the WCAC. So this guy only played his senior year. He's a starting point guard on the basketball team. Plays his senior year in the toughest conference. Starts that corner, not only just starts that corner, but was, was voted by his peers as well as the, uh, the coaches as a, top, as, as a first team conference. So we got a steal on our hands. Yeah. This, guy is, this guy has length, he has versatility. He's extremely competitive, extremely competitive, and he's gonna be a great player for us. Can you maybe kind of go under the radar with a guy like that who doesn't have as much football tape? Kenny, I'm scared. Yeah, is he a little bit under the radar then if he doesn't have he, he a lot was, of tape on him? Yeah. He was, but fortunately, you know, we, we you found him. him. I had I had a couple of ties that, that knew about him. I actually was recruiting him at my previous uh, university, and I was hoping that he, that he would fall to us. Uh, so when Walt got the job, you know, we definitely gave Walt, you know, his name, and, and the rest is history. All right, Coach, we look forward to seeing what you can do under the defensive side of the ball. Great, appreciate it. All right. Now we've got a uh, welcome back to campus of sorts with uh, our man Ryan Walsh. Ryan. We're here with secondary coach Jason Tudrin. Coach is coming from the University of North Carolina, but this is not only a local success story, it's a homecoming for you. 
Northampton, UMass alum. Tell us, go back, go back to the mid-90s, I guess, and start, uh, start the story for us. Well, Coach Bell called me uh, right around Christmas. Uh, I got goosebumps, got excited with the opportunity to be able to come back home. And, and as I came on campus and got to meet Ryan Bamford and see him speak to some guys on, on our official visits, start watching the highlight tape, walk into the facility, see Daryl Thomas walk in here, a guy that played wide, wide receiver with me, and, and, and have dozens of teammates calling and, and saying, hey, Jay, it's great to see you, man. Great to have you home. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I haven't been as excited for anything other than probably the birth of my three children than, than to be sitting here right here today. How cool is it when you played at UMass, it was 1AA, now being part of the FBS and trying to build it toward the future? I love the vision of the program, you know, to be able to walk into that building. I've driven by it a couple of times. I've never walked in it. And the first time I walked in that thing, I was floored. That facility is better. The locker room, the weight room, and the training room is better than what we had at the University of North Carolina. You're the secondary coach. Teams chuck it 50 times a game nowadays. How difficult is your job going to be? Coaching secondary is fun. Coaching safeties is what I'm going to be doing. Coach Raheem's going to be coaching the corners and, and, and kind of coordinating the whole thing. But playing football is about playing tough, being competitive, being active, and being a trustworthy man, being, being able to do your thing. So I'm excited about coaching back in. I'm looking forward to, to, to seeing how our kids respond. Let's talk about one of the defensive backs coming in, Logan Darby. Where is he from, and what can he bring to the table? He's originally from Bentonville, Arkansas, and uh, went and played so uh, Juco ball down at Southwestern College in San Diego. He's a competitive young man. He, he brings a sense of toughness. He's got some maturity. That was a big hit right there. Yeah, he, he's a guy. He's a guy that has been in our weight room since January 22nd. He's an early enrollee and spends extra time after workouts, comes in on Saturdays, done a really good job of unifying the guys that are in the room right now. So I'm excited to work with him. Coaching is in your family tree a little bit. Talk to you. Uh, I, I'm sorry to hear your dad passed a few years ago, but those of you who are from Western Mass probably know of him. Tell me a little bit about his story dating back to his UMass days. Well, I can remember as a child coming to UMass practices when Coach Pickett was here. Jim Reed, all the way through Coach Hodges, as who I played for, and 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 being a part of this university because he played here, and we always used to make fun of him, and play with him a little bit, saying he was the original Rudy, and uh, and and we had a lot of fun with that. Obviously, did his thing at Northampton High, and the thing that that really, I was a high school coach for 16 years, and 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 I take val I take a lot of pride in that because he was doing it for 40 years and unfortunately passed and uh, left a long lasting impact on two communities. He was here th for 30 years as the stadium named after him over in Northampton, then went down to Naples, Florida and spent 10 years down there, which is a small period of time. And they named the stadium after him down there, which I think speaks, speaks volumes of the impact that he had on human beings. So I'm just hope I'm lucky enough to be able to have a similar impact because that's the mission I have coaching football. How proud would he have been to hear that you're coming back to UMass? And you can put a tear in my eye, but it'd be, uh, it'd be special. Yeah. This, is, this is an awesome story. UMass, from your days to now, are you going to be the local coaching and player historian for these guys to, tell, to talk about the great history of UMass? Yeah, we haven't, we've been recruiting so hard, so we haven't gotten into story time yet. <laughs> but uh, we will definitely, I, I will definitely verse them up on, on, on the ways of, of what this place stands for. You know, what, do you have a favorite memory, either on the field or off, from your days at UMass? I have hundreds. <laughs> and, and I can tell you, they all start with the relationships. You know, seeing Daryl walk in here today, and there's an embrace. Like we, we, I probably haven't seen him in 15 years, but it's like we saw each other yesterday. So it's it's that connections, those relationships, is what I value, and it's the great thing about this place. Your coaching staff might be the youngest in the country. How? How is that a positive to connect to some of these young men walking into the room for the first time, trying to build a program up? I think it's great. How old do you think I am? <laughs> 42. Amen. All right, I'm 42. Now, I'll be 46 <laughs> next week. I'm the <laughs> oldest guy on the staff, but I love being around young people. That's why I think I look so young. And so um, I think it goes to, the, to, to when, when people walk into our building, they see a ton, ton of energy, high energy people that are excited and love the game of football, that are competitive, want to be successful. So I think that only speaks to, to, what, to what type of work we're going to do here. What's it mean to you to be a UMass Minute Man? It, it means a lot, you know, it means the world. It's about the relationships. I met my wife, Barbie, here. We've been married for 23 years. We've got three kids that are all doing great things, 22, 18, and 16. One's graduating from the University of North Carolina in a couple of years and got one graduating from high school. So, and it all started here, you know, it all started with the relationships that we built here. So UMass means everything for me. I can't, I can't explain how excited I am. Well, let's hope you are the start of something great here once again. Let's Thank you, it. Coach Dudrin. Appreciate you. Thank you. Secondary right. coach for UMass.
We'll be right back on the UMass Football National Signing Day Show. Join the UMass Football Gridiron Club today. Its mission is to strengthen the university's football program by encouraging private and volunteer leadership from Minutemen across the country. Members provide financial support to help the Minutemen compete at the FBS level, provide leadership development programming for student athletes, and sponsor functions for club members. For more information on the UMass Gridiron Club, visit www.umassgridironclub.com today. annual UMass Gridiron Golf Classic is one of the premier fundraisers hosted by the Gridiron Club. It's a chance for former student athletes, alumni, and coaches to reconnect and spend a fun day on the golf course while directly supporting the UMass football program. For more information, please contact Jason Germain at jag at admin.umass.edu. We've had a lot of coaches to get to today. How about one more? Tommy Restivo joining us here as he's the co-defensive coordinator, linebackers coach. Tommy, uh, welcome to UMass. I appreciate it. Great to be a mass man. Yeah, all right. Hashtag mass man. Yes. We got that trending today. Yes. Defensive side of the ball. We heard from uh, Coach Azar Abdurrahim, and he certainly has a lot of experience as well. You do too. Coming from South Florida last season. Hopefully you can utilize that, translating it into success here at UMass. Yes, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Um, you know, I got here maybe two or three weeks ago. You know, Coach Bell called me up. I was actually going into an in-home visit at the time. I said, I'll call you back. And then I called him the next day and ended up here. So I drove overnight to come to Massachusetts. So I'm you, glad to be here. You get here two weeks as a linebackers coach. You already got a power five guy. So we'll, we'll touch upon that in a moment. Yes. But we got two uh, linebackers to talk about here for this signing class. Let's start with Xavier Gonzalez and what he does. Well, he's going to play some defensive end for us. You know, this is a guy that has some size. When he came on his visit, uh, it's the first time I've seen him. You know, he's 6'3", 255. He's going to be a defensive end for us. The guy is a very explosive off the edge can rush the passer. And one thing that's great about this kid is he has relentless effort when he plays. Uh, very excited on, on what he could do off the edge. Um, and, and he could play the run also. Very physical football player for us. This is a great addition uh, for us. Yeah, certainly an area that needed some improvement last year defensively here for UMass. So hopefully maybe attacking the quarterback a little bit more. Yeah, you know, we can get into the, the, the multiple schemes, as Coach, uh, Coach Raheem said. And that, that's the thing with him. You can put him in four down or, or, or three down. He's very multiple on what he can do in our package. The other guy I think 
fans here had heard this news a couple of days ago. Jarvis Miller, who played 11 games for Penn State last year, he's going to play his final season of uh, eligibility here at UMass. Yeah, we're very excited about Jarvis. Jarvis, you know, he was an early enrollee graduate uh, guy for us, and he's already in the weight room, already working out. And, you know, with him, he's, he brings a lot of leadership to the table. Uh, you know, he's one of these guys that's going to be a physical football player. He's going to play the wheel linebacker for us. And obviously he has production being at Penn State, but the leadership factor, yeah. he's going to be the oldest guy in the room for us, and that's a great addition for our defense. You might be older than some of the coaches. No. I, we, we, here we got a young staff now. Nah, I, okay. I think I'm the third okay. oldest on the staff. So. Uh, <laughs> but he does – a guy like that coming from a, a big-time program can certainly provide you know, just different intangibles to – creating that culture that head coach Walt Bell talked about at the open. Yeah, that's the number one thing is creating a culture and, he, and he's going to bring that within our, we're in our, within our linebacker room and within our defense just alone because he's been, been through the defense for four years at another place and coming here with the accountability and the culture that he's been in and what coach Bell's trying to do with our program. I mean, it, it's a great addition for our defense. I know we've hit you with a lot in the short amount of time that you've been yes. here, so we appreciate you taking the time no, today. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, coach. Appreciate it. Now back over. So we brought back the tight ends coach, recruiting coordinator, John Bills. He's across the way with Ryan. Ryan. Coach Bills, you came to Amherst. Yes, sir. And Coach Bell gave you a place to lay your head for a couple of nights. <laughs> Tell us about that. Oh, well, like I said earlier, just, just the belief in Coach Bell, it was a no-brainer decision for me to come here. But between him and, and his wife, Maria, uh, they've been, you know, phenomenal to all of us as a staff, just making us feel right at home, even though they were just settling into their home as well. So it, it's, it's, that just kind of goes to show you just the cohesiveness we have as a staff, and they both do a great job with that. Family atmosphere here. Absolutely. Ask. So in addition to your role as recruiting coordinator, you're the tight ends coach. What type of tight end are we going to see in your system, a big blocking back or someone who's going to go out and catch the ball like a receiver? Uh, the biggest thing when you're talking about playing the tight end position, it, it's creating mismatches. So you got to dictate to the defense how they want to play us. It, they either got to put another run stopper in there, in which case we got to be able to take advantage of them in the pass game, or they got to guard you a little smaller, in which case we got to run the ball. So we just play that hand and make the defense decide how we go from there. Let's talk about one of your National Signing Day signees, Taj Jones, a receiver, an athlete. You seem to see that all over college football, going in the NFL now. Just get the most athletic guys on the field and get, them, get the ball in their hands. Yeah, so Taj was actually the first one to call us up and say, I want to be a mass man. And he, we saw his film, and, and I know it's, it's shown behind me. Uh, he does both sides of the ball. He plays both sides of the ball very, very well. And just speaking with him, I got the chance to go down there to, to Sparta and, and get a chance to sit down with New him. New Jersey. Yep, and Coach Carlson does a great job there. Um, he, he's just an even better kid. And when you talk about building a culture and setting a standard for what we want to be known at here, uh, he, he kind of epitomizes that. What type of role did he play in high school? Uh, he was a wide receiver and a safety. And when you sit down with him and you ask him, which, you know, which side of the ball do you see yourself playing? His response to me was, I like hitting people. I love offense, but I like hitting people. And when you talk about from a safety perspective and that mentality that you bring, and he's got the intelligence, the academics, and character to back it up and get everyone lined up, that's kind of the attitude that you're looking for. You uh, seem to see a theme of New Jersey guys. What about that area is a uh, hotbed of recruiting for UMass? The Northeast in general it has a lot of great football up here, um, not just New Jersey, but Massachusetts and the surrounding states as well. And if we're going to be successful from a recruiting standpoint, we have to do very, very well in that home territory. So that'll be a major focus of ours going forward uh, by myself, by Coach Tudor, and by the whole staff going forward. And we, we got to do well there, and we're going to. Coach John Bills, thank you very much. The UMass National Football Signing Day show continues.
Thanks for staying with us on the UMass Football National Signing Day show. I'm here now with co-offensive line coach Micah James. Coach James, welcome to UMass. Happy to be a mass man. All right. Why UMass for you? Well, uh, first it starts off with Coach Bell. Um, five years ago, I was just getting into coaching. He was a GA. I was the GA. He was the offense coordinator at Arkansas State. And um, probably about three years ago, he told me, you know, Micah, you know, you work your tail off for me. You're going to be my offensive line coach. And uh, he's always taking care of me. And since that moment, three years later, he gets his first time to be a head coach. He, he holds to his promise. Um, the never lie to you part is really, really important to me, and that's something I really believe in. And then you look at the staff, this pepper with other guys who are really, really important to me in my life. Uh, Freddie Knight, the running backs coach, one of my really close friends, coached him at Arkansas State. Coach Pascal helped me get um, one of my first jobs. Uh, Coach Zar, me and his family are actually close um, growing up in the D.C. area. And uh, he's been really good to me. And there's other guys on the staff who have just really, really been big influences on me so far. You have the Middle Tennessee State, the Arkansas State connection, but you're mm -hmm. coming from the University of Central Florida, yep. where they won a lot of football games recently. <laughs> Yeah, is winning contagious? Do you think this staff, where a lot of guys are coming from winning programs, do you think that's going to be contagious here? I, I, I definitely do. I think it's um, when you know how to win, uh, when you come with the energy of, from a winning program and things like that, I think that definitely does help. Uh, the biggest thing is just trying to make sure that we build a culture and complete the vision that Coach uh, Bell and, and the AD have for the program. And I think that's right along the lines of being what a great winning program needs to be. Now, you got a couple big boys coming in. Let's talk about yep. one, Max Longman yep. out of Michigan. What can you tell us about him? Well, the big thing with Max is that he's only played football for two years. Um, he was a baseball player. He's a little underdeveloped, but you just see how big and thick he is. He has a lot of athletic ability, um, plays at first base. He's a good good football player. Really, really excited to have him. Family's awesome. Uh, Coach Tudrin actually was big on that. He's the one who kind of got us on the kid late and all that type of stuff. And, you know, he was, he's really excited about coming up to being a mass man. We're really excited about having him. How about Xavier Graham? What can you tell us about him? Well, Xavier Graham, the first thing that, um, that comes to mind to me is just how smart the kid is. The 3.8 GPA, the 28 plus ACT, that, that's the first thing that pops off in my head. And that's, that's what you need to be a good football team. Then you flip on the tape and you just got a tough physical football player. And that's what you want. The, the, biggest, the biggest compliment you can give a guy, a football player, in my opinion, is that you're smart and tough. And he checks both of those boxes along with his family. Great people, military base, um, family. Um, can't wait for them to come up. And at a high school in Florida, yep. where it's the dream for all coaches to be rec rec recruiting down there. No, there's no doubt. And uh, we're really, really um, blessed to have that kid. Um, had to fight to Fennell, and he committed to us and did a great job of keeping some guys off of us. He wanted to be a mass man and can't ask for much more than that. All right. Thanks, Coach Games. Good luck to you this year. Back over to Jay. Thank you. All right. You can't run the football without a good offensive line. We're going to talk a little bit about the running game with running backs coach Freddie Knight. And Freddie, welcome to UMass. Uh, thank okay. you. I'm glad to be here. Now, you actually played for head coach Walt Bell at yes. Arkansas State as a dual threat quarterback, although you say maybe you a little might, bit one sided. Okay. Right. More the running than the, than the right. throwing. What was it like to play for Coach Bell? It was fun. Um, I remember the first time I met him, we're in the quarterback's meeting room. It was right after we had got done playing the GoDaddy Bowl down in Mobile. And he walked in, he said, you sucked. <laughs> <laughs> but you won, and that's all that matters. So um, I knew right then that he was going to be an honest guy, straight shooter. Um, and he's really been a tremendous force in my life. Just he's looked after me when he didn't have to. Yeah. Um, he let me sleep on his couch for six months. And he gave me a shot at getting in this profession. So I thank him more than anything. But He's just a fun guy to be around. He's energetic. He's smart. Um, he's one of those guys that you want to be like. You, you want to be like him. You want to think like him. You want to attack everything like that. So um, he's awesome. Good to know he's got an open spot on my couch, too. Uh, <laughs> let's get into the running backs. Right. Uh, one of the early signees this year was Kevin Brown. Let's go into sort of some of his tape and, and what he might bring to the table. Right. So Kevin Brown, he is a mass man. He is from Dorchester, but played at Everett. And he is a big kid. Like, he is a guy that you do not want to tackle in the hole. Um, so I think he's going to bring a big piece of the physicality part to our run game that we're going to need because we're going to have to put people out in space. There's going to be a lot of arm tackles that people are going to have to go you know, try to tackle him. He's going to run through those. He's a big, powerful kid. Um, he's going to be able to help us out on special teams, which I know Coach Pascal, he'll be really anxious yeah, to get him out about there. That. Yes. One of four uh, Mass Natives signing in this class. 
Um, you know, obviously you got the size there, but he's also got some speed too, huh? Right, yeah. He's a guy that once he gets out in the open field, good luck. You know, that's what we want. We want guys to be able to create explosive plays to mimic our pass game. One of the other signees that we kind of have coming in here, uh, designated maybe a wide receiver, but can also play running back to Jermaine O.C. Johnson. I'm not sure where that nickname comes from. Can you tell us about him? Oh, uh, okay. So O.C., uh, it's a nickname that he actually got from his dad and it's been passed down. Uh, but he's going to play that A-back position for us. So a guy who can go out in the slot, come back in the backfield, jet sweeps, uh, run in some of our exterior run game. He's one of those guys who can create big mismatches, especially if they want to put Will Backers on him. Uh, but he's a guy that when you see him, he's got a smile, he's energetic. Uh, he's teammates with Josh Wallace, so we got a nice little there you DMV go. got a little tandem there, yeah. Exactly. So um, get the ball in his hands, a guy that can kind of right. parade in space. Exactly. We saw him at camp about two years ago. He came out, he had some neon cleats, and he was tearing up everybody, <laughs> and it was awesome. He got a little hurt sizzle, his, too, there. Right. Huh? All right. He got hurt his junior year towards ACL, couldn't play. And so we're really fortunate to have him because we didn't think that we'd ever be able to. But watch him in camp do those things. He's a phenomenal football player. He's going to do great things for us. How much are we going to run the ball this year? Oh, people are going to have to stop the run. That's number one. You got to be able to run the ball when you want to, when you have to. Stack the box. Yep. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, back over to Ryan. We're here with co-offensive line coach and run game coordinator Jim Jackson. Coach, thanks for being here today. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. You probably have the longest journey to UMass here in Amherst. Yep, all uh, the way across the country. My wife, uh, she said, uh, Babe, you know we live in the nine zip codes and we're moving to the zeros, right? So it was interesting what you thought about it like that, but it's been great. They get From here. San Diego. At, yep, they get here on Saturday. So my wife, uh, Michelle, and my uh, two kids, my daughter's May, she's six. My son is two, uh, Grant. So we're fired up. We're fired up to see them. They're excited to be here. All that good stuff. A lot of wins out in San Diego as well in the last couple of years. Plus, what's your connection to Coach Bell? What, what made you want to join this staff here? Great question. You know, I've known Coach Bell for a while. Um, We've been good friends, never worked together, but really just had a great idea of how the game should be played, how a program should be run. A lot of the things that we think about tough, competitive, smart kids that play hard and play fast and do those things well. And, you know, San Diego, we had a great setup. You know, as a co-offensive coordinator, we'd won a lot of games, but I'm a competitor, man. And I want to win games and I want to do it at the highest level. So when you say FBS and you say Coach Bell and you say a flagship state school research institution like that, I mean, you don't walk, you run. And that's why we got here, and I was here probably about December 10th, December 12th is when I got hired. Let's talk about two of the offensive linemen who have signed and are already on campus. A lot of times with O-linemen, you hope or you usually don't learn their name. This is a name I don't think you're going to forget. Helber Falgundes. Falgundes, yes. Falgundes, tell yeah, us so about Helber's him. a great kid, man. He's, he's born in Brazil originally, so he moved here about seven or eight years old. He's from Everett, Mass., so he's a state champion. He knows how to win. He's a tough physical O-lineman. He's probably about 6'5", 320 pounds. Really physical, working his butt off in the weight room right now. Got to do some things to improve, some pass pro techniques and some things like that. But we're fired up about this kid. He is a road grader, a run blocker. He'll be fun to coach. He's what we're about on the UMass O-line. And you got a junior college transfer out of Mississippi, originally out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Bryce Wade, is he potentially a guy with this experience that could step right in? Yeah, definitely. He's coming in to compete, and that's one of the reasons why we recruited him. Coach Buckley over at Jones Junior College, he did a great job of help guiding him through the process, guiding him through everything in recruiting. And he's already here on campus. He's put on 10 or 12 pounds with Coach Shadid already, and that's been a great, great asset to us. That's one of the guys as an offensive line coach, your best friend is the strength coach. So me and Coach Shadid have already talked and, and had a great plan for these kids to have success. Bryce should help us out this season. He's athletic, he's long. We gotta get him bigger, faster, stronger. But this kid, I'm fired up to coach this kid, so we'll be good there. As a run game coordinator, as long as co-offensive line coach, how important is it for your linemen to be in shape? Because it seems you're going to be going fast and you're going to be running the ball a lot, not the clogging up the middle old school lineman type. Yeah, no doubt. We want athletes, and we talk about this all the time. We want athletes with twitch, with explosion, who are strike and who will move, okay? Coach Shadid will make them better athletes when we get them here. Bigger, faster, stronger, but more athletic. So the biggest thing for us, getting athletes, coaching them pl to play hard, play fast, because when, when you get ready, that ball's going down, we get ready because the ball's going to get snapped again. You know what I mean? So that's what we're fired up to do. It's going to wear out those defenses by the end of the game. No doubt. That's what you look for in this offense. And we really want to do a great job of just being physical, communicating, being tough, and doing those things at the line of scrimmage. Coach Jim Jackson, welcome to UMass. We'll welcome your family here in a couple days. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for being here. And the UMass Football National Signing Day show continues after this.
This is the place where planets collide. Where Pulitzer and Fulbright are full-time residents. Where 28,000 brilliant young minds from 65 countries call home. This is the place that propels the state and lifts the world. UMass Amherst, this is the place. One final time here on the UMass Football National Signing Day show. Man, we really packed a lot in this 90-minute segment. We're going to close out here with Brian Bamford and back with head coach Walt Bell. Coach, it's been good to get to know some of these uh, these coaches. We saw the names out there in print, but now we actually get to, to see their faces. It seems like you de developed a really solid crew here. No, I, it's a great group of dudes, you know, and, and hopefully just in those small little increments you have with each one of those guys, whether it be over on the side or up here on stage, you know, it's huge, you know, and, and just for, you know, I'm a little bit of a high stress guy, a little high strung, um, and, and to have a great group of people that you can count on, you know that, when, that things are gonna be done the right way, and not only they're gonna be done the right way, they're, they're gonna be done, you know, in a way, you know, that allows our young people to be better, and so just excited for this group of guys and ready to get to work. What's next? Yeah, I think I'm excited for, you know, now that this class is over, I, I got to give credit to Walt and the staff. You know, uh, the last month and a half, it, it is truly a sprint when you get hired to a new job. And he's done a magnificent job of getting the guys that he wants here from a staffing perspective, which obviously helps when you're going on the road and recruiting and trying to sell this university, which is not a hard sell. But you yeah. got to get guys here and you got to pound the payment. They've done a great job of doing that. I'm excited when they get to go through a first, you know, their first full year and get another signing class under their belt after having been here. I think that's that's what's ahead for the program, long range. But I'm excited for what you've got going on, in, uh, you know, in the spring and getting to football. I know you guys are excited yeah. about coaching them up, and that's uh, you know we've got a a great event February 28th uh, in Boston where Walt and his staff will be there. We'll introduce them to the masses. Uh, in Boston, and, and for those that want to come, it's an event that I think we'll, you'll get a, a good feel, you know, beyond today of their personality and what they bring to this program. Coach, between now, April 20th, what's that timeline look for you guys? Yeah, I mean, uh, with, with Coach Shadid, I mean, there, there's still a long, you know, three, four, probably weeks, you know, four to five weeks left in their training cycle. Um, those last two weeks left in their training cycle, we'll start to uh, indoctrinate them a little bit into football you know, with some, uh, you know, small sessions each day, you know, not, not really trying to cut into their weight, you know, weight room time too much. Um, we've got a lot of developing to do, but uh, start getting them into football, and then we move into spring ball, and uh, then the spring game on April 20th. So just, just excited more than anything else, not, not just the football piece, but how we go to class, how we attend tutors, you know, how prepared we are every day to do our job at a high level, you know, and just, you know, our staff and, and if you go in our weight room, I mean, something you hear all the time is how you do anything is how you'll do everything. And so we just got to make sure that all those things outside the white lines are in place so they can be the best players they can be. Ryan, you've got four Massachusetts guys here. You've got players from up and down the East Coast. It really feels like there's been an ability to keep some guys here at home and then also go out and, and reach into different pockets of this country in this class. One of the things when we recruited uh, a new coach here and interviewed Walt, and he was one of the, the folks that we wanted to talk to, one of the things that really I thought uh, was pronounced about how he talked about recruiting to this, to this university was the idea, and we've talked about it now with spring recruiting, is staying within a six-hour radius and really doing well 
in that area, whether it's going down to the DMV area, up through obviously Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, and then recruiting you know New England really, really well. And if we do that, we feel like that's a great core yeah. for us. And then we can go get some guys from other areas. But boy, that's great to, for them to have either a quick flight to, to, to campus or, or get here by car. And I think that, that helps us. And, and that was something that resonated. That's when we were really good in this program over the, over the years, we've had people from close by that I think have been able to commit to this program, and, and I think that's something you're going to see in the future. Coach, are you excited to kind of actually be able to maybe get some time here in Western Massachusetts now that you've got this uh, kind of under the rug? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just excited to spend time with my wife more than anything yeah. else. <laughs> you know, we, uh, we, in the last month, um, she's moved into a house. I have a house that I only see. Apparently has a couch, I heard. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I sleep there on Friday <laughs> night and Saturday night, and then I've done that for a month. So, uh, you know, probably it's been a total of 10, 12 hours at home in the last month. So just excited to spend time with her and, and, and re not relax a little bit. I don't do that very well. But, um, you know, just expi you know, excited to spend time with her and, and then – get back on campus yeah. and get rolling with our guys. I mean, that's the name of the game right now. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It, it's exhausting. It, it, it doesn't end. And I'll I tell you, he's got a great partner, Maria, and that you didn't meet her today. She's, she's arguably the MVP of the last two months. Uh, she's done a magnificent job of getting things organized for him, which I know takes uh, it takes a lot, and he, and he, he recognizes that. And it allows him to do uh, what he wants to do from a professional standpoint to get this program where we want it to be. And uh, and so, I, you know, I think we're excited. Uh, we, we know the ability for this program, the ability that this program has to be, uh, you know, not only uh, uh, instill pride in this Commonwealth, but across this region and to, to do what we've known as a pro sports market, a lot of winning. Yeah. And, and we, we feel like we can do that here and we're excited about what, what's next. Man, it would be great to take down Rutgers on that first game, huh? Yeah, absolutely. I, we won't get off the bus if we don't plan to. So <laughs> we'll get off the bus. <laughs> Sounds good. Oh, well, big thanks to all of our seat and ticket holders and, uh, and friends of the program for joining us here today. Guys, any final thoughts? We good to go. I'm good. I just, all right. I just want to say thanks to everybody that's here, you know, and, and we're proud to build a program that represents you guys, you know, and that's what we want to do more than anything else is make sure that we put a product out there that makes you proud and gives you something to want to be invested in, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. And so thank you guys for coming appreciate everything and uh, I can't wait for the day that, that we do make you proud and it's going to happen. We got a lot of <laughs> we got a number of people watching too. That's the, the, the visibility that we've been able to play with our television contracts and now our agreement with Nesson and a lot of people watching too that are excited that I'm yeah. following on Twitter that are following everything that we do and that Coach Bell's done and it, we got a good core group, and we're trying to get out to the masses and, and recruit more because it takes a village to be successful as a football program. And we just want to support he, he and his staff and the young men in our program to allow them to have success, obviously, in the classroom, in the community, in the ways that they build engagement there, and then ultimately on the gridiron. Guys, thanks so much. Thanks, How about Jared. one final round of applause for all of our guests here today? And again, our thoughts are with Andy Gresh, who could not be here to host this one. Big thanks to our fill-in over on the other side as well as uh, we get ready for the spring game coming up next. Till next time, my name's Jay Burnham saying so long, everybody. <laughs>